Oh, look, we kicked off the show with David Seymour talking about what is now some trouser as well as talk from Chris Hipkins in terms of changing, halting, putting on hold policies that were unpopular and contentious, not just with the general public, but with certain sectors of, of uh, our community. Uh, one group that had some issues and always tends to have issues with a, a, a left-leaning government uh, is the business sector. But one of the major changes that was put on hold and this group had, had expressed concern about was the Employment Insurance Scheme, which was basically a way for employers to subsidise the dole for people who might lose their jobs. Um, and that has been, well, what has happened to it? Has it been stopped? Has it been put on the back burner? Has it been kicked for touch, put out to pasture? To find out, uh, we are joined now by the CEO of Business New Zealand, the country's largest busy business uh, lobby organisation, uh, Kirk Hope. Kirk, good to have you back on. You can't be disappointed um, with uh, Chippy's moves. Well, I think with the, particularly with the income insurance scheme, we had said to the government when they released the discussion document at the beginning of 2022, this might not be the right time uh, to do it, um, particularly after you'd had a long uh, lockdown in Auckland and people were feeling particularly businesses were feeling pretty battered by that. However, they went ahead with it in any, in any case. And then there were some a series of um, proposals that were in there which had extended and expanded the scope of the scheme well beyond what, what, what we had been talking about. So it was pretty frustrating. Um, and I, I think probably the right move to, to push it down the road. Uh, people are feeling... Uh, still feeling pretty. Uh, st some businesses are still struggling, and, and you know you've had the recent flooding events and, and all yeah. that have. So, so is, is the income insurance dead or parked? Uh, well, I think it's parked. I mean, they said that they would revisit it uh, in 2025, or that it wouldn't come in before 2025, um, and they are doing more work on it along the lines that would suggest that they might to to reduce the cost of the scheme if, if it does come in. All right, but they may have given with that hand or not taken with that hand, but also a rise and a significant rise in the minimum wage. What impact does that have on your members and on business and wage wage growth as a whole? Yeah, it has a pretty significant uh, impact, but not in the way that people think. Probably not directly through the increase in the minimum wage, although you know seven percent is a, a seven percent increase, the largest increase in I think sixteen years in the minimum wage and combined increases of around 34% over the, over the five years that Labor's been in. So it's pretty significant. Um, but what it does do is it put, puts a lot of pressure in the, the skills and capability levels above the minimum wage. So if you see uh, your colleague who is a young, predominantly young, uh, sometimes unskilled worker getting a 7% pay increase, you're going to say, hey, well, where's my 7%? You know, I've got... I've got a family to, to look after and so on and so forth. So it really does put pressure right through the wage scale. Um, and so that's the, that's the more challenging thing for people to, businesses to deal with. The other issue is, you know, how you, how you manage that through your business. Do you pass it on to your customers? Do you absorb it? Um, and, you know, those are the things that businesses will be having to think about. If they have a, uh, even if they have no minimum wage workers within their workforce, they'll still have to consider that there may be pressure as a result of that 7% uh, increase. Yeah, uh, Kirk, I also understand that it is largely going to be teenagers who make the most of that because they're the people who are on the minimum wage, right? Young, younger people. Yeah, yeah so <clears throat> I think the, the highest proportion of, of people that, that receive that increase uh, in the minimum wage are, are people uh, probably under 25. Yeah. All right. Overall, um, do you feel that this is a more business-friendly Labor administration? I've, I've, <laughs> good question. Uh, look, I think the proof is still in the doing or in the pudding. I mean, most of the stuff that um, was sort of announced uh, uh, on Wednesday uh, and which was sort of taken off the table uh, were more, more mainly political things. I mean, I think what we would want to see is some real movement towards a friendlier investment environment, uh, better recognition of you know, capital building, uh, better 
rules around foreign capital. What we want to see is you know, things that are inviting for people to come to New Zealand uh, and bring their money so that we can expand and grow. We, we really haven't seen anything of that from over yet. So a lot of po- politics, um, but you'll, I'll wait and see on substance for business, I think. OK, so politics, not, not substance, or you've yet to see the substance. The other issue that you and other lobbyists have been banging on about for business is immigration settings and it would be fair to say that Labor have reluctantly and slowly from time to time moved them and shifted them without, if you like, admitting that they'd made a mistake in the first place. Is there still work to be done there and would that be a signal of more than just politics and perhaps some real policy change? Yes, but I think that will have to be such a significant adjustment and such a change in communication um, that, you know, because the reality is you're, you're dealing with, um, uh, as you described, Sean, a lot of incrementalism in immigration. I mean, if you're a, a migrant or a, or, or a potential migrant or a business, you would have seen literally hundreds of changes in the immigration instructions over the last five years. Um, so that is really difficult and it sends a very mixed signal to anyone who might want to come to New Zealand. There's a long way to go to repair, I think, that damage. All right, and the truth is that in some ways the boat with the immigrants on it has sailed, but not to New Zealand, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, countries like Canada uh, and Australia, uh, and particularly under, believe it or not, under the Albanese government in Australia, you know, they said, you know, you guys should come here, we want your skills. Our immigration policy is going to be enabling here for uh, for business, we, we and we need you. Um, New Zealand sort of said, well, we might need you, we're not sure. Um, no, actually, we don't want you. Uh, oh, no, we do need you. Yeah, no, it'd be great if you could come. Uh, and so that's quite a contrast, frankly. Yeah. Um, do you get the feeling, and you would have met with Chris Hipkins, and I, I, I know you worked um, in Business New Zealand, worked closely with... Uh, the Prime Minister and her department, particularly during the time of COVID. Um, your assessment is of Chris Hipkins more business friendly than Jacinda Ardern, easier to work with? Uh, look, I, I mean, I think um, Chris will be will be easy enough to access. The, the question uh, is with, you know, any Labor government is you know, how much they will listen to the business community when they say, when we say, hey, maybe do this or maybe don't do that. Uh, and, and I think it's, again, um, it's early days in that, that discussion with, okay. with Putin as Prime Minister. So you are not saying hallelujah, the Messiah has come here? Wait and see, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Oh, you live in hope. Uh, Kirk Hope, I thank you. Very well, I didn't even mean that uh, that, uh, that pun, Kirk Hope. Thank you for joining us. That is Kirk Hope, CEO of Business New Zealand. He says, oh, yeah, uh, not so much. Immigration. Need major changes to immigration, proactive changes to immigration, and uh, business uh, lobbyists, uh, length and breadth of the country have been, um, have been clear on that. And you know who's going to get the most from the minimum wage increase? People who work at Maccas and young people. So it's a little bit of a sop maybe to the average 18-year-old who might be voting for the first time. Uh, no party, uh, no other political party is going to uh, roll back that minimum wage increase. But it is kind of nice to think that we're not going to be taxing employers for the dole, which is essentially what I think the uh, income insurance scheme uh, was.